In this video tutorial, I'm going to be recreating one of the most iconic scenes in The Empire Strikes Back. To do this, I'll be using the Hasbro 29-inch Star Wars Rebels Millennium Falcon, the Bandai 172 scale TIE Fighter, the Zvezda Star Destroyer, and a bag of lava rocks that I purchased from Lowe's. I'll put it all together and when I'm done it's gonna look something like this. From the photo shoot to post-production, these are gonna be some short tutorials to show you some of the workflow that I use that I think is important to you. My name is Ken Pearson, and this is Ken Pearson Photography. In this video tutorial, we're going to be talking about photographing the Zvezda Star Destroyer. And this model is going to be the centerpiece to our entire project. So we're going to give a little more attention to this than we will the other models. But this is really going to drive all the decisions that we make going forward. So as always, when I do these videos, there's a couple assumptions that I'm going to be making. Is number one, that you have a general understanding of how to use your camera in manual mode. Number two, you have some basic understanding of how to use Lightroom, exposure, compensation, copying settings or synchronized settings from one image to another, um, things like that. And then also you have a basic understanding of how to use Photoshop, specifically how to make layers and so on. Okay, so you'll be seeing how I'm doing that. There's nothing complicated and sophisticated that I'm doing in this. Uh, I think that when it's all said and done, it's going to be a very easy process from A to Z, and you can apply whatever it is that you'd like to uh, take away from this into your own projects, okay? All right, so with that said, let's talk about this photo shoot for this particular model, okay? So a couple of things, I spent more time photographing this than the other ones. Basically what I did was is that I set up a variety of different poses. I knew what it was that I was looking for. I downloaded them and I probably returned back to the garage to shoot three or four times, did that, repeated that process because even though I got some good images, I wanted to go back and make sure that I got the right image to be used in this, um, this entire scene. So when I talk about the right image, there's a couple of things that were important to me up front that I wanted to make sure that I was capturing. So the first thing was is that obviously the angle was going to be important, okay? So I wanted to replicate that scene from the movie. So I definitely knew that I wanted to expose the belly of the ship as well so I could see underneath it. That would help um, provide some mass to it, okay? So I can see how big it was because I can not only see the top, but I can see the bottom as well. And the other thing I knew that I wanted to do was expose the docking bay because it was, um, I wanted to use installed lighting on this model. I thought it looked really, really nice and I wanted to make sure that that was used in the final uh, product. Now, once I got all of that uh, taken care of, by the way, I'll just share with you, I shot um, everything with no lights turned on and then when I got down to the final shot that I was certain that I wanted to use, that's when I replicated the pose again with the lights on and then shot that docking bay lit up and then superimposed it on there, okay? The only other lights that I actually used uh, that were installed on here were the trench highlights, okay? So if you're familiar with the Star Destroyer off to the side, um, there's some trench highlights that are included here and I actually did the exact same thing and I superimposed those finished results uh, on, the, um, on, on the final uh, unlit Star Destroyer, okay? Now, with respect to all of the other installed lighting that's on here, I do have the fiber optics in here, and I chose not to photograph the model with the, uh, with the lights on, and that, that was a no-brainer for me. The reason why I didn't want to do that was because I wanted 100% control of everything that I was doing with respect to lights. And so if I had shot with fiber optic lights turned on, I'd get some that were brighter than others and so on. I didn't want to have to deal with that and you know have to try and fix all of that afterwards now I'd, i would also say in this case here is is that um i knew that when it came to the focus stacking i would be photographing this at f22 i'll be talking more about the focus stacking in a moment but as it relates to the lights if i was going to be photographing at f22 you may or may not know this but anything f11 and above you start to get a starring effect within the camera so if you think of something along the lines of like christmas tree lights on a christmas tree on a christmas card um, then basically you get that starring effect. Now I know that those can be filters, I understand that, but 
what I'm saying is you can also achieve those kind of starring effects uh, at night in your night photography in, in the, within the camera f11 and above okay so that would have been a lot of light spillage and I didn't want to have to deal with that so that was important too I think the last thing I would say that I had to make an, an adjustment for and I knew I want to do up front was that if you're familiar with this particular model um, one of the things that's a little bit of a disappointment about it is and you, you read a lot of people complaining about this online is the actual trenches on the side are much narrower narrower in this model than they actually are in the studio version the studio version the trenches are a little bit thicker higher and so I know that after I, I, I was one of the first people to buy this when it when it came out and so I know that after the fact um, there were uh, some 3D printed parts that you can get. I think Shapeways may make them. Uh, 3D printed parts that are more studio accurate in their trench wall sizes. So you can replace the trench walls that are here with the 3D printed parts and then um, it'll elevate that. So uh, I know there's something you can do there if you, you're interested in pursuing that. So in this case what I actually elected to do was I took the model and I, I basically you know, remove the top from the bottom and I rested it higher and I elevated this and then I cheated and in Photoshop after the fact what I did was I raised the trench walls in, in Photoshop to get more of that that studio that studio version okay that you would see so um, again something I just did I, I knew that I was able to do that up front and that's what I decided to do so there's that all right so as it relates to photographing this model, um, you know, I'm going to show you all the things, how I, how I adjusted and compensated for all of these different things within Photoshop. The first thing I want to talk about and show you is uh, some of the things that you might want to do as it, re as it relates to the, uh, um, the focus stacking process. Okay, so if you're not familiar with focus stacking or haven't seen any other videos on or anything I've recorded in other videos, it's used quite often in a variety of different types of photography, but especially when it comes to photographing, trying to photograph um, objects like this up close. And so this is a great example. I'm holding this right here in front of the camera. And you can see the problem is, is that the back of the Star Destroyer is in focus and the front is out of focus. And in order to get a clear image of everything, what you have to do is you have to photograph the Star Destroyer or anything you're photographing uh, at different, uh, you know, focus at different parts, combine a bunch of images together to make a final image that's all in focus. So again, when you use something like F22, assuming you have the right settings, the right lighting, and so on and so forth, that's great because you're using fewer images. You can achieve this with any f-stop, but the smaller the number, like 2.8 or 5 or 8 or whatever, the more images you're going to be using because your depth of field is going to be shallower, okay? You're going to get a smaller depth of field in each area, so you're going to require more images. There's pros and cons to doing it either way. Um, sometimes you may not have a choice. so. Just think about that. Now, the other thing I would say about the focus stacking process is that um, if this is something that you're going to use in your own model photography routinely, and I highly recommend it, even if you're just using two images, a good example is the TIE Fighters only require two images to do the focus stacking to make sure they were completely in focus. But if you're going to do this routinely within your own, um, your own model photography, then I would recommend getting an external monitor for your camera. The one that I'm using here is a small HD. You can get what you need in a in a uh, in an external monitor um, on um, on Amazon for maybe like a hundred bucks, and uh, maybe you know a hundred bucks, hundred two hundred bucks. And you want something that's going to have the focus points in it. So those focus points will help you rack focus from one image to another. Okay, so once you get those focus points, they can help you rack focus from one image to another. And you can see in this example here that whatever's red is in focus. And so once I take that first image, I rack my focus, my manual focus to the next section. I take an image that's in focus, then I move it to the next section, next section. So the external monitor really does a good job of giving me that clarity. And there's nothing I'm missing through the viewfinder or even on the small display in the back of my camera. Okay, this is very crystal clear. So next what we're going to do is we're going to bring all of this into Lightroom. We're going to do all of our color corrections, synchronize our photos. From there we're going to bring it into Photoshop. We'll start with the photo stacking process and basically make that one final image 
then I'll show you the final touch-ups that I do with the lights as well as the uh, bringing and superimposing the dock from one image to another on there and then some of the final touches that we do with the trenches and such and we'll be done and you'll see it's a very very easy process. Let's get started. All right, let's begin here by talking about the focus stacking process. So the model that you're seeing on the left-hand side is the actual model that's in the finished product over here. Okay, this one obviously is in focus from front to back, and this is not. So there are eight separate images here that uh, were photographed at different focus points and then they were blended together in the focus stacking process. So the first thing I would say is that once you selected the group of images that are going to be included in your focus stacking process, the first thing you're going to want to do is edit one of the images to make sure that your exposure is correct, you have the right shadows you want to be using. All the settings in your development tools on this side over here are where you want them to be for the image you're working with, okay? So I'm not gonna do anything drastic here. All I'm really gonna do to show you this process and how to sync the photos before you do the focus stacking process is basically, in this example here, I'm going to change the white balance, okay? So you can see down below that this has a completely different tone and texture to it than the rest of the images that are included. So I can't really focus stack this together just yet because this is now off. So what I wanna do is I wanna select the rest. So I'm just gonna select all of them here and you can see here that the eight was my key one that I was working with, image number eight. So the uh, the color of the white here is, is more pronounced and these are a little bit more gray, okay? So these are the secondary images, if you will. So what I'm going to do once I've done that, and assuming I've made all my corrections here, I'm going to click Sync, and I'll, it'll give me options of what it is that I want to sync. So if you've done any uh, brush corrections along the way, you can include those well, spot removal, stuff like that. You can do that, but in this case, I, I don't need that. I'm just going to click Synchronize. And then as soon as I do that, now all of the images have the exact same settings and we are ready to begin the focus stacking process. So having them all selected still, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click, then I'm gonna click on edit in, and then I wanna use open as layers in Photoshop. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take a little bit. It is a heavy process, and also not just depending on the speed of your computer, but depending on how many images you have, how big each one of those files are, and so on and so forth, okay? So I'm gonna time lapse this, and you'll see what it's going to look like as soon as the process is completed by opening as layers in Photoshop. A few moments later. All right, now that we have the Photoshop document opened, you can see each one of the eight images that we had in Lightroom are now layers in this Photoshop document, okay? So as I turn off these different images, you can see the different focus points in each one of these images. And what we're going to do is we're going to blend them all together so we have one final image that's completely in focus, okay? So before we do that, just one thing that's really important for this next step. You have to select all of these layers. I'll be doing that in a moment, but where we're gonna be going over here is gonna be edit, and then we're gonna be using these two, auto align layers first, and we're gonna do auto blend layers. But you can see that I don't have access to these. They're disabled because I haven't selected any of these layers. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna choose the one at the bottom. I'm gonna hold down shift, and then I'm going to choose the one at the top and select them all. Now I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna to go to auto align layers, okay? So I'm gonna click on auto align layers and I'm just, I'm not even gonna change anything here. I'm just gonna choose the auto, okay? And I'm gonna click okay. So it's gonna take a few seconds. One hour later. All right, so now we've auto aligned all of the layers, okay? So they're gonna be a little bit more in sync with one another. Now when I do this, I can see that everything has been aligned perfectly. Now we can blend the images. So again, wanna keep them all selected. Back over here, now I'm gonna click on auto blend layers. Again, I'm just gonna stack images. I'm not gonna do anything else. I don't have to change a single setting here. So I'm gonna click OK. Two hours later. All right, and here it is. It's all blended together and we have one nice, clean, totally in focus Star Destroyer. Very nice. That's how you do the focus stacking process. 
All right, so in this portion of the video, what we're going to talk about is bringing in the uh, lit docking bay from this image and putting it in over here, okay? So the difference is this is a version of the focus stacked uh, Star Destroyer. It's not the same one that I previously did. You can see the white balance is a little bit different. And uh, over here is a photograph of the Star Destroyer with the lights on. Now, there are subtle differences to this, okay? You can see here parts of the Star Destroyer here are not being uh, visible here. So th there's been some tampering with this when turning on the lights and such, and, and the uh, there's, there's a little bit of position changes. And that's fine because it's really not going to be noticed when we're done with this, okay? So normally I would open these uh, in Lightroom uh, as layers in Photoshop. Uh, but I just want to show you the two here. What I ended up doing here is, is basically copying and pasting this image and throwing it in here with the image here called Dock On. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my uh, workspace. I'm just going to consolidate that here. We're just going to work uh, with this particular image. Okay, so I'm going to do that here like this. All right, now when I turn on the dock, let's just get this zoomed in a little bit more. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of fuzz and a lot of hair in this one that was cleaned up in the final image. And so again, this is going to be just down and dirty. I'm not going to get precise, but I'm going to do enough of this so you can see how the result is achieved and you can emulate this in any of your models or any of your model photography, okay? So let's turn this on first just to take a look. Now I've got this at a 35% uh, just so I can see a, a ghost of this, okay? So I'm going to put this on over here like this. What we want to do is in the end we're going to achieve something like this. Okay, so I turn on this layer here. I'm going to be using layer mask. So I'm going to go through that process again and just turn that on. So you can see this is this is pretty nice. It's very, very easy to do this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this on again. We can see, you know, it's, it's out of bounds. It's a little bit, there's a lot of ghosting going on here. So they're not exact. That's okay. So what I want to do first is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a layer mask. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. And now you can see I want to make sure my, my layer mask is selected. Okay, so I want to have that there. I want to make sure that it's selected. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to go back over here. Okay, and then I'm going to use my polygon tool. Okay, my lasso tool here. And I'm not going to be precise. Now I'm suggesting that you are, and I was in my final image, at least as precise as I can be. But in this case here, I'm just going to sketch this out and I'm going to not worry too much about the grooves over here that I would normally go around. Okay. So I'm going to start here, do something like this, like this, like this, and like this. Maybe you want to do there just to show you as an example, but you see, I, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about those nodules. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. All right. Now that I've got that and I've outlined it, I'm going to take my. I want to make sure I'm on white, color white, and I'm going to take my brush tool, and then I'm just going to paint on this portion here. Okay, so it's a little bit opaque because I haven't turned up the opacity here, so it's only at 35%. So I want to bring that up all the way to 100%. And there we go. Okay, so let me just undo this. So you can see, all right, that it's there and it doesn't make a difference that, um, you know, it doesn't fit entirely perfectly. I mean, you can work with this and do some touch ups and so on and so forth. And that's perfectly fine. I would uh, subdue some of the lighting a little bit. It's kind of hard. Uh, maybe cover some of this up, you know, do some touch ups within here, but it's perfectly fine. You can just do it on that. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is the trench walls. So as I mentioned earlier, that I wasn't satisfied with the depth of the trench. I didn't feel that it represented the studio version of the model. They're very uh, small here. They're very narrow. And the studio version has uh, what, I, what appears to be uh, much higher. Okay, so you can see that what I did was... Um, I, as I mentioned, I removed, I separated the top from the bottom. And you can see here that just on screen that I have this uh, space, okay, that's appearing here. And that's because the uh, top part of the model has been uh, pulled apart and raised up, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna fill that with some of what I have here. So again, this is gonna be um, very loosey-goosey. I would take my time and do this properly just to give it, you know, the perfection that it deserves. But in this case here, I'm just going to use a method which is very basic and, uh, and give you the idea what I'm doing here. So what I want to do is I want to duplicate my bottom layer here because I'm going to be um, sort of wrecking it. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can probably do this. I'm just going to show you the way that I've done it, which is similar to what I'm showing you here. Okay, 
So I'm going to get down in here very quickly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, this section here from the baseboard, or whatever you want to call this, the bottom lip. Okay. And then I'm going to grab this. And then I'm going to grab this. And, and I'm just going to start with this front section. I don't want to work with too much uh, at the same time. So you can split this up. And I'm going to work with this section here. Then I'm going to go over to Edit, Transform, and then Skew. Okay. And all I'm going to do is just make this bigger. Okay. So I can do something like this. Okay. Do that. And then what I want to do is just spend some time cleaning some things up. And, and guys, there's a variety of different ways that we can be doing this. I can be, you know, using my eraser tool, things like that. In this case, um, you know, I just can give myself some soft edges. Okay. Again, I can get in here and do a lot of different things, but I'd want to repeat that process over here for the back so I can get that elevated there too. Okay. So you get the idea, but it's a very simple and efficient way to just make those corrections and get going. All right. So that's going to conclude this video. The next video I'm going to do is going to be on the asteroids and the space background and a couple of miscellaneous little things. Um, I appreciate you taking time to watch this. Please leave any comments down below if you have any your own suggestions and tips and tricks. Love to hear them. If you have any reference material, please post them for everybody else to see as well. And if you can, if you enjoyed this video and like to see others like it, please subscribe to the channel. Always appreciate that. Thanks very much for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.